Cash Color Campus podcast sponsored by the Georgia Hemp Company. The Georgia Hemp Company, dedicated to providing you with access to the highest quality hemp products and a place to learn more about hemp's potential benefits and uses. Head to thegeorgiahempcompany.com to learn more. I've been following Asia Atwood for a while, and I finally got a chance to talk to this amazing woman. Asia, how are you doing today? Very good. Thank you for having me. I'm glad we connected. Finally, it's finally. Been a while. It's you been know a while. what? And this is a Boston connection here, man, because, you know, I, and like she, we was just talking, I rarely get a chance to meet people from Boston in the space, being that I'm living in Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. I have to literally go home in order to see some people anymore. So it's great to meet you and bump into you yeah. and finally get a chance to get into your story. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I live in Massachusetts, went to Northeastern University. I'm originally from Philadelphia, so I okay. grew up in South Philly. But then went to school at Northeastern University. That brought me into Boston, and I've been there for about 20 years. It's okay. Been a bit. I was gonna say I'm 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 trying to hear the Philly accent. Like people often tell me I don't have a Boston accent. I say that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't hear the Philly accent. Do you still use John every once in a while? Does that come out? Sometimes. <laughs> I was home for Thanksgiving, and my wife said she goes, "Yeah, it, it, there it is. It yeah. comes back when I'm around, you know, around your people." So that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so I got I got friends of mine in Philly. I'm from Philly in Atlanta, and they had to teach me about John because I said. I hear it so much. Like, yeah. is it a noun it's verb? Anything. He says everything. <laughs> it's anything. <laughs> it's like whatever you, you feel. Anything. Whatever you feel. <laughs> so, Asia, tell us about how you got into cannabis. Um, what was what was your start, and how did you find the plant? Well, I mean, you know, similar to a lot of other people, I used it more recreationally. Okay. Didn't understand what the medical benefits were. Um, I'm an athlete. Well, I guess I'm going to still say I am an athlete. I don't play sports as much as I used to anymore. But I played. Um, tackle flag football for about 10 years and then women's tackle football for three years really what position running back really yeah so i got i got my ass handed to me i got beat up man <laughs> look wait, man you and marvin washington might want to talk here <laughs> yeah i was about uh, 50 pounds heavier different you know different body frame i was able to do it but it, it caused a lot of physical issues for me so i was actually medicating for pain after games and not really knowing what it was that was making me feel relaxed yeah. you know it was just like oh it's, the game is over gonna hang out, smoke a joint, feel better, and then see how it, how it goes from there. But when I started learning about the medical benefits of, of, the, of the plant, I also understood that this is an industry, this is an opportunity, and as people of color, as a black, gay woman, this is an opportunity for me to make sure that I put I put myself in there and I have some space for people like me in there as well. Yeah. But I'm an engineer. And I didn't want to come at it like, oh, I'm now, I'm going to cultivate. I'm going to get a cultivation license and just open up a, a, a grow. I'm not a grower. It's not my, like, natural, I mean, I can grow. I grow my own plants, but I'm not a large commercial scale grower. I didn't. I don't wake up in the morning thinking of growing a lot of plants. <laughs> yeah. Some people do. Some people do. It's life for them. So for me, I had to say, what do I? what is it that I really want to do? And as an engineer, it's building technology, I'm trying to make sure that we're using equipment that's sustainable, um, that uh, can help people stay in the game as long as possible, regardless of how much space they have outdoors. So I'm focused more on the indoor cultivators mm-hmm. and making sure that people that don't have access to land and maybe don't have access to a lot of space have a shot to maintain in this uh, in this industry. That's major. And it's also dope that you figured out a way to take your take your engineering background and apply it to this new to this new space. Yeah. Um how is it important for you and for you to to be an example for other people who do have backgrounds in other businesses and other industries and want to get into cannabis but don't really know how to do it. Like how do you just speak to them about you know possibly transferring their old skills into this new into this new profession? Yeah, I mean I think it's you know sharing stories. So I'll share my story. I was in corporate America for 15 years. Um, I was uh, managing a group of 30 engineers and they were from Maine all the way down to DC. Yeah. So I traveled a lot and um, but I was I, and I enjoyed what I was doing but it wasn't really for me. And when I saw the cannabis space as an opportunity for me to participate, I just kind of took it slow. I did some research, I joined organizations, I learned more about the history of the plant, about the politics, because um, there's a lot of that, there's a lot of background yes, to this. Yes, yes. Um, and, you, and, you really, and I really didn't want to just jump in and go, oh, I'm in cannabis now. I, you know, I took my time, and I did it while I was working my full-time job as well. So I didn't just quit my job and, and jump into it. I, I did it part-time on the side, and then as um, you know, I started to build more connections and started to get more familiar with what it was that I wanted to do, I was able to step away from my full-time job, but that took about two years. It wasn't an overnight process. So I say for anybody, you can, you know, uh, it's a, you know, if you have value, if you have a job and, you, and you've got a corporate background, you can use that in this space. There's definitely there's, there's space for you here. We're still at the very beginning. A lot of people feel like they might be missing out. It might be too late. It's definitely not too late. Um, get involved and take your time. Yeah. yeah. So um, what got you down here at MJ Business? 
So we are down here to meet cultivators, meet investors. We're looking for capital. Um, we just won the Boston University Cannabis Pitch Competition. Congratulations. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Yeah, so it was a nice ca size cash prize and also a partnership with a company called Green Lion Partners. Um, so uh, they're here, I'm here, and they're uh, working with me to identify investors and also partnerships. Um, our technology can be used and can be supplemented with lots of other companies that are here too. And we're also looking for uh, beta testers, uh, commercial size cultivators that we can partner with to grow, um, to, 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 to test our equipment, but we're looking for specific types. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm here to, to search them out. How's it been going so far? I mean, clearly it's, 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 there are people here, it's almost like sensory overload. Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I mean, I just got in last night and um, I walked in this morning. I mean, just getting to the convention was something in itself. <laughs> yeah. Just from the hotel to the convention in Vegas or something. So I'm here, um, had a meeting with Green Lion Partners, and now I've got um, some tasks and some things to complete. So I'm going to walk the floor and do my best to see as much as I possibly can, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's really a large, you know, I go to the one in New Orleans often, and mm -hmm. this is, I, I imagine it'd be a scaled down version of this, because yeah. there's a lot of people, but this is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, we've, we've been to trade shows in Boston. We went to Nikan, Boston at booths there when we first started um showing people what it is that we're doing with our uh, technology we got feedback so we went to trade shows yeah. and it was at that time it was cheap it was like two years ago now to get a, a booth at a place like mj BizCon in vegas you know you've got to be you know substantially oh. you know revenue generating yeah. you got to have a lot of a lot of money um to get a spot here and we'll get there you know next year hopefully um, but uh, for now, just walking the floor, getting to know people, and finally getting a chance to connect with you. Awesome, yeah, man. So let's talk about my hometown of, of Boston and my home state, Massachusetts. Yeah. I know that we're pushing out of uh, they're pushing out a, a social equity, but they're pushing out so, so state, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> social equity is a hot topic in the city, in the, in the, city, in the state. Right. I know they're having issues implementing it uh, actually. Yes. You know, they're, they're, there's struggles with that, but they're not alone. You know, they're having the same struggles in California and mm -hmm. almost any other place. Mm -hmm. um, speak to us about what's going on in Massachusetts in your opinion. Um, what is the biggest holdup as far as making sure that people are being um, taken advantage of some of the opportunities that social equity was supposed to allow for? Yeah, so I mean, one of the things about Massachusetts is we have lots of different licensing types. Yeah. So you don't have to, um, you know, you could be a delivery, you could have delivery service, you could do uh, social consumption eventually, that is, they're still waiting on that. And you know, obviously do cultivation, research, and development. But getting the license from the state is great, but you also have to get a host what's called a host community agreement from the town where you want to actually yes. work yeah. out of it. Um, so you could be great with the state and that social equity um, aspect is something that's state focused. So it's something that basically gets you a little bit further down the line to get your license maybe sooner than other people. But once you walk out of the state capital with that license in your hand, you know, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, you're now space. You're back in the town. Yeah. You gotta make it work. Yes. You need capital, you need to find a location, you need, and once you tell somebody that you're trying to build, a, buy a building or build property for cannabis, the price of that um, <laughs> skyrockets, they're not asking yeah. for twice as much as they were before. Yeah. So the barrier is capital, is money. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I spoke to that about my, my man, Alby Montgomery, Life of Plants. We spoke about that, and he was telling me about how um, he's actually been offered money for his um, mm -hmm. for his license. Yeah. And he said he's not alone. He's like, he's known some people who actually taken the money. Yeah. And we actually called that episode "Don't Sell Grandmama's House." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to this. I understand oh, you ain't got yeah. the bread, but don't oh, sell it into the so house. True. Yeah. And I feel like that's the thing. Like the capital part is where people, I guess, kind of get lost in the sauce. Like mm -hmm. the wording of social equity. That's dope. But at the end of the day, there's still levels that you got to accomplish in order to even get to that point. And by the time you get to even halfway there, there's somebody with a check ready, you know, probably saying, look, yeah. I'll ease this up for you a little bit, which eliminates everything that social equity is supposed to do. Right. You right. know, and I think that that's the hardest thing to, um, to try to overcome. It's the hold. And yeah, the hold and people's mentality, because you're staring at an industry where you'll hear news stories will tell you that um, Denver prints almost like a, a hundred million a month. And you're thinking that you should start generating money immediately, but this isn't that job. No. no, this isn't that career and this isn't that lifestyle. And if you ain't got it in you to brave that out, then yeah, you're probably gonna sell out quickly. Yeah, yeah. And that's very true. People have been approached is you've got that um, social equity stamp if you're a license holder. Um, you know, people will offer you over a million dollars to, mm -hmm. to, to give them that license. But what happens is you don't have ownership of that company. Yeah. You don't have any decision making. Um, and it's not yours. Yeah, yeah. And and you only get one. You know, you, you can't go back in line and try to get like another, you know, social equity license. It's yeah. not <laughs> you you've given up your chance. Yeah, and it's that sad part, right? Yeah, yeah. So um it's um 
it, it's true. You don't want to sell out grandma's house. No. You know, we we got to hold on to these things. And I know the state of Massachusetts and actually the city of Boston tried to come up with like a fund mm -hmm. um, to help offset something like to, to do a loan so that you could get money from yes, the city yes. of Boston to help you get up and going. Um, and there was some pushback, but I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe there was a little bit of movement on that where there will be some sort of funding, yeah. um, but I don't know the date when that's going to be actually you know out there and, 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 and available to people. Well, let's hope for the best with all that, man, because, yes, yeah, clearly an industry that we need to see more people of color involved in and just more more diversity involved in overall, you yeah. know what I mean? And we need to make some real active, actual movement in there, not yeah. just words anymore, not just conversation. I, I agree. And that's why I, I, I try to um, suggest to people to do ancillary cannabis yes, businesses because the licensing process is part of the system. And, yeah. if, and if you are following systems and capitalism you understand that there's a lot of background to that there's a lot of you know it's not it's not designed for us to succeed yes so if, if the licensing process is part of a system that's not designed for us to succeed your better bet might be to try to work outside of that system and mm -hmm. to, to do ancillary where you don't even have to worry about the licensing process in the first place yeah cashcolorcampus.com <laughs> <laughs> there it is that's so uh, next year this time where do you think we're going to see you Hopefully out on the floor with a booth of our own, um, yeah. and that's what we would like to do. Um, you know, I don't know how much the cost. They always go up every year, so we'll have to see if our budget can handle that. But yeah. um, you'll see us um, in more of a national, uh, you know, uh, uh, level. We've been focused mostly in Massachusetts and doing a lot of like outreach and things in the Northeast. But we got to get out there on the West Coast and the Midwest, and, and you know, I want to get I want to get in Oklahoma. I want to check out Michigan and Illinois and see what's going on out there. So I'm going to be traveling a lot more next year. Um, and trying to meet people as much as many people have. So, if you're looking to connect, um, you can hit us up at uh, Trella, T R E L L A dot I O, Trella dot I O, or you can email me or email the, the team at email us, email us, one word, at Trella dot I O. Uh, and uh, if you're looking, you know, if you want to know more, if you want to connect, we would love to connect with you as well. Awesome. And that's Cash Color Cannabis live from MJ Biz with Asia Atwood. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. That was dope. Sponsored by the Georgia Hemp Company. The Georgia Hemp Company, dedicated to providing you with access to the highest quality hemp products and a place to learn more about hemp's potential benefits and uses. Head to the GeorgiaHempCompany.com to learn more.